Urban exploration has always been a thrill for me, even if it freaks out most of my friends. There's something about stepping into places that were once full of life and now sit silent and decaying. I don't go into it thinking I'll find ghosts or anything like that. It's more about the history, the feeling of walking through someone else's forgotten moments. But County General was different. It had a reputation around town and not the kind you could laugh off. People said it wasn't just abandoned, but cursed. Nurses who worked there talked about strange disappearances before the hospital closed down. Even my grandparents used to warn me to stay away from that part of town, though they never explained why. Of course, none of that stopped Dave. He was the type who thought everything was a joke until it wasn't. He'd been after me for weeks to check out County General, and I kept pushing him off, trying to avoid it. The place just had this aura that felt off, like it wasn't done with whatever evil had plagued it before. But eventually, as always, Dave wore me down. We chose a Saturday night for our adventure, mostly because I figured fewer people would be around. The hospital was on the outskirts of town, hidden behind a field of tall grass and trees that had grown wild over the years. The fence was rusted and we found an easy spot where it had been bent, probably by other idiots like us who thought exploring was a good idea. When we finally stood in front of the hospital, I got my first good look at it. The place was a wreck, broken windows, vines creeping up the walls, and the whole building sagged like it was just tired of standing. But it was huge, bigger than I'd imagined, and it had this eerie silence that pressed down on us the moment we stepped through the fence. Looks like a damn horror movie set, I said, half joking, but Dave just grinned like he didn't have a care in the world. Inside, the hospital was somehow even worse. The air was thick with the smell of mold and rot. The walls were peeling, and the floors were a mess of broken tiles and debris. We made our way down one of the main corridors, our footsteps echoing as if the building was empty, but not quite dead. I could hear every creak, every shift of the wind against the broken windows. Dave was already snapping pictures, his flashlight cutting through the darkness. We've got to find the basement, he said, excitement in his voice. That's where they say the weird stuff happened. I tried to brush off the uneasy feeling building in my chest. You mean where they did surgeries and all that? Not exactly my idea of a good time, but he was already ahead of me, finding a staircase that led down into the bowels of the hospital. My gut told me not to follow, but I couldn't leave him down there alone. The basement was cold, colder than it had any right to be. The air was damp, and each breath felt heavier as we moved further in. It wasn't long before we found what Dave had been looking for, a long, narrow hallway lined with old rooms, probably storage or utility spaces. The doors were hanging off their hinges, revealing dark, empty rooms. We stepped into one of the rooms, and that's when things got weird. In the center of the room was a chair. It looked out of place, almost too new compared to the rest of the hospital. There was no dust on it, and as Dave shined his flashlight around, I realized that the entire room felt wrong. It was cleaner than the rest of the building, like someone had been in there recently. Dude, let's go, I said. I didn't want to sound scared, but something about that chair freaked me out. Before Dave could respond, we heard a loud bang from somewhere behind us. It wasn't just a random noise. It sounded like someone slamming a door. Dave froze, his flashlight flickering for just a second before coming back on. What the hell was that? He whispered, his cocky attitude finally fading. I don't know, but we're not sticking around to find out. We turned to leave, but as we stepped into the hallway, the temperature dropped even more. Our breath fogged in front of us, and the hallway seemed darker than before, even with our flashlights. That's when I saw it. At the far end of the hall, a figure stood, barely visible in the shadows. It wasn't moving, just standing there watching us. Dave, I whispered, nudging him. Do you see that? He nodded slowly, his flashlight fixed on the figure. Let's go, he said, his voice shaking. We turned and hurried back the way we came, but every turn we took seemed to lead us deeper into the hospital. It was like the building itself was shifting, trapping us inside. My heart was pounding, and the walls felt like they were closing in. And then without warning, Dave screamed. I whipped around just in time to see him yanked backward, disappearing around the corner of the hallway. His flashlight hit the ground, spinning wildly as it went dark. Panic surged through me. I started shouting his name, running down the hallway, shining my flashlight into every room. 
But there was nothing. No Dave. No sign of where he could have gone. It was like he had just disappeared. I stumbled through the dark corridors, my heart racing. The hospital felt alive, like it was watching me, playing with me. Every turn I took led me further into the maze, further from the exit. And then just when I thought I was completely lost, I heard it. A faint, shaky voice. Dave's voice. Help me. I followed the sound, my flashlight shaking in my hands. Finally I found him, crouched in a corner at the end of a narrow hallway. His face was pale, his eyes wide with terror. He looked up at me, but there was something off, something distant in his gaze. Dave! I rushed over to him, grabbing his shoulder. What the hell happened? Where did you go? He didn't answer. He just shook his head slowly, like he couldn't find the words. I helped him to his feet, and we made our way back through the hospital in silence. By the time we got outside, Dave still hadn't spoken a word about what had happened. He didn't look at me, didn't talk on the ride home. He just stared out the window like he was somewhere else, reliving something he couldn't explain. We never spoke about County General after that. Whenever I asked, Dave would just go quiet, his eyes darkening like he was still trapped in whatever had happened down there. Whatever he saw that night, it changed him. And I'll never step foot in another abandoned building again. I had just started my job as a maintenance technician for a local utility company, and part of my training involved inspecting old, abandoned sites for potential hazards. It was supposed to be a routine assignment, but when my supervisor handed me the report, I felt a chill run down my spine. The old textile mill, Madison Textiles, was on the list. I had heard stories about the place. My parents used to warn me about it when I was a kid, talking about the fire that shut it down and the rumors of strange occurrences. I pushed those thoughts aside as I drove out to the factory, reminding myself it was just a building, a piece of history that needed a quick once-over. As I pulled into the lot, the mill loomed ahead, a hulking mass of crumbling brick and rusted metal. Vines crept over the walls, and the broken windows resembled empty eye sockets, staring out at me. I parked my truck and took a deep breath, gathering my courage before stepping out into the eerie silence. I grabbed my flashlight and tools, feeling a mix of excitement and unease. The air was thick with the smell of mildew, and every step I took echoed in the empty hallways. I switched on my flashlight, the beam cutting through the darkness as I began my inspection. The inside of the mill was just as I expected, dusty and filled with old machinery, but mostly intact. I moved deeper into the building, checking for any structural damage or hazards. The faint sound of metal creaking surrounded me, but I brushed it off as the building settling. As I reached the main factory floor, I stumbled upon a large loom that was still intact, oddly untouched by time. I leaned in closer, examining it when I suddenly heard a noise. It sounded like a distant whirring, like machinery coming to life. My heart raced as I looked around the room, trying to pinpoint the source. Get a grip, I thought to myself. It was probably just my imagination playing tricks on me. But the noise got louder, and before I knew it, I was drawn toward a doorway, leading into what looked like an old storage room. The sound was unmistakable now, a soft humming. Against my better judgment, I pushed the door open. Inside, the room was dim, with shadows dancing along the walls from my flashlight. The hum intensified, and I felt an overwhelming sense of dread wash over me. It was as if something was alive in this place, something waiting in the dark. Suddenly, a gust of cold air rushed past me, and I heard it, a whisper. Help me. It was faint, barely above a whisper, but it was there, echoing around the room. I froze, scanning the shadows. Hello? Is someone there? My voice trembled as I called out, but all I heard in response was the hum and the rustle of something shifting behind me. I turned, but there was nothing, just empty shelves and crates filled with dust. Panic went through me, and I felt the urge to run, but curiosity held me in place. I stepped further into the room, shining my flashlight into every corner. The whisper came again, more insistent this time. Help me. Before I could process what was happening, I noticed a trapdoor partially hidden beneath some old tarps. It was slightly open, and the humming seemed to be coming from below. I knelt down and pushed the door open. A narrow staircase led down into darkness. The air grew colder, and a sense of dread gnawed at me. I hesitated, but the voice was growing louder, urging me on. Please help me. It was as if someone was trapped down there, begging for help. 
My instincts screamed at me to leave, to get out while I still could, but the pull of that voice was too strong. I took a deep breath and went down the stairs, the flashlight beam flickering as I moved. Each step creaked under my weight, and the air became heavier with every inch I went down. The whispering grew frantic, echoing off the walls. Don't leave me. At the bottom, I found myself in a small, dimly lit room. A few old crates were piled in the corner, but the real focal point was a gaping hole in the floor, a dark abyss that seemed to stretch endlessly downward. I approached it cautiously, peering into the void, and that's when I saw it, a pale hand emerging, grasping at the air. I jumped, stumbling backward as the whisper turned into a scream. Help me, please. Without thinking, I dashed back up the stairs, my heart racing. The voice screamed behind me, but I didn't look back. I pushed through the doorway and back onto the factory floor, sprinting toward the exit, my mind reeling. As I burst out into the daylight, I leaned against my truck, gasping for breath. The voice echoed in my head, and I knew I could never return. I never spoke about what I saw, about the hand clawing for help, because deep down I felt it was better left buried in the darkness of that old textile mill. I left the mill behind, but the memory haunts me. Sometimes late at night I can still hear that voice calling out. I don't know who or what was trapped down there, but I know that some places are better left abandoned and some cries for help should never be answered. It's been over 10 years since my friends and I made the mistake of exploring the old Westwood Mall. Back then, it was just an old, run-down building that had been sitting empty for years. I remember hearing about it when I was younger, how it used to be a vibrant shopping destination, packed with families and kids, before it fell into disrepair. My friends and I had grown up in that neighborhood, hearing the legends of the haunted mall, but we dismissed them as silly urban myths. On a warm summer evening, after a few rounds of dares and way too much pizza, we decided to check it out. There were five of us, me, Jake, Tara, Marcus, and Lila. We weren't scared, we were excited. The thrill of breaking into a place that was off limits made us feel invincible. Armed with flashlights, we parked in the empty lot and hopped over the crumbling concrete barrier that marked the entrance. A few broken windows lined the walls, and the faded letters of the mall's name loomed over us, partially obscured by weeds and vines. It was a ghost of its former self. As we stepped inside, the air felt heavy and stale. The musty smell hit us immediately, a mixture of mold and decay. The mall had seen better days, cracked tiles, shattered glass, and broken stuff everywhere. We decided to split into pairs for a little scavenger hunt. Tara and Marcus headed toward the arcade, while Jake and Lila wandered off to the old department store. I ended up on my own, meandering through the food court. The remnants of fast food joints still stood, their signs hanging crookedly, and the linoleum floor was sticky with who knows what. As I walked, I let my mind wander, thinking about how bizarre it was to see such a lively place turn to ruins. The silence felt eerie, almost like it was waiting for something to happen. Suddenly, I heard a loud crash coming from the arcade. I froze for a moment. Guys! I called out, feeling a chill run down my spine. The others came running, their faces pale and eyes wide. When I reached the arcade, Tara and Marcus looked like they'd seen a ghost. The old machines had somehow turned on, flickering lights and all, as if they had a mind of their own. I figured it was just a power surge or something, but still, it felt unsettling. What did you do? I asked, half joking. They insisted they hadn't touched anything. Just then, one of the machines blared to life, and the screen went black. The next thing we heard was a whisper. Get out! It wasn't just a suggestion, it felt like a command. We didn't need to say a word. Panic set in, and we bolted toward the exit. But the mall felt like it was shifting around us. The path we'd come from seemed to disappear, replaced by dark corridors that twisted and turned in ways that didn't make sense. I was convinced we'd never find our way out. As we rushed through the mall, the whispers grew louder, mixing with the echo of our footsteps. Get out, it urged, more insistent this time. It felt like the mall itself was alive, closing in on us. In our frantic search, we came across a massive atrium. The glass ceiling allowed only a few beams of light to break through creating an almost ethereal atmosphere. As we caught our breath, I couldn't shake the feeling that something was still watching us. The flickering lights around us began to dim, and for a moment, it felt like time stood still. That's when we saw it, 
A shadow darted across our path and we all froze. We weren't alone. The shadow flickered in the corner of my eye, then vanished. I glanced at my friends, their faces a mix of fear and disbelief. Did you see that? I whispered, but no one responded. This isn't funny anymore, Lila said, her voice shaking. We turned to look at the exit we'd just come from, and it was gone. Instead, a long corridor stretched out before us, one we hadn't noticed before. The whispers intensified, almost drowning out our panic. We have to go, Jake urged, and we took off again, sprinting down the corridor. We could hear our footsteps echoing loudly, almost mocking us. Finally, we spotted a faint glow at the end of the hallway. There, I pointed, and we bolted toward it, praying it would lead us to safety. The closer we got, the more intense the whispers became, echoing off the walls like a bunch of voices urging us on. Bursting through the door, we found ourselves outside, the cool night air hitting us like a wave of relief. We landed on the grass, completely exhausted and ready to leave the mall behind forever. As we looked back, we could see the building looming over us, a dark silhouette against the moonlit sky. In that moment, we all shared a silent understanding. We were lucky to have escaped, but the memory of that night lingered in our minds. The mall had a creepy vibe that stuck with me, a reminder that some places are best left alone. We laughed nervously, still shaken but relieved we all made it out. That was the last time we ever ventured into the old mall, and I still wonder what we could have found if we hadn't turned back.